Once the shooting began, the Continental Congress had to address its army's truly staggering needs. Private gun ownership was more widespread in British North America than in any major colonial region in the Western Hemisphere. Careful samples of probate inventories from Massachusetts and South Carolina, for example, suggest that on average about half of white households possessed at least one firearm, and almost all of these possessed only one firearm. A very rough back of the envelope guesstimate, and after all, no one ever got into trouble guesstimating about numbers of guns in early America, right? So this is, <laughs> this is okay puts this number at between 150 and 200,000 guns. That's a lot of guns. That's a lot of guns. But a large proportion of these guns would have been unfit for military service, and a lot of the people that had workable, serviceable guns would have been reluctant to give their only good gun up when they were facing invasion and war. So while private guns did go to the rebel effort, they weren't nearly enough, and Leaders in Congress made this absolutely plain when just a few months after the Declaration of Independence, Congress orders its agents to try to procure 100,000 muskets in continental Europe. As for powder, the colonies had perhaps 80,000 pounds of powder on hand. That's the best estimate we have. That also sounds like a whole lot of powder. <clears throat> Most of this dated from the Seven Years' War. So 80,000 pounds sounds substantial, but Patriot forces expanded nearly 30 times that much, 2.3 million pounds, just in the first two and a half years of the war. So again, totally inadequate. 